Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Greetings from Warsaw, Poland. It is our great honor to welcome so many art professionals and change makers from around the world joining today's edition of the Art of Mindfulness. Luan, international curator of experiences that connect beauty, truth and ethical reflection, and the Global Leaders Program, growth platform for impact-focused arts entrepreneurs worldwide, join forces to co-present the Art of Mindfulness. The Art of Mindfulness brings inspiring voices from the intersection of art, ethics and mindfulness into the lives of individuals on all continents. In a time marked by increasing complexities, the Art of Mindfulness offers an interactive platform to find peace, meaning and collective conscience through diverse artistic practices. Whether by cultivating mindfulness techniques in life or reconnecting with our creative selves, this series is designed to impact. The Global Leaders Program offers an Ivy League curated executive graduate certificate in social entrepreneurship and cultural agency. Each year, 50 music professionals distinguished by proven accomplishments and a persevering commitment to create change become part of an international cohort. Led in partnership with nine top universities, among them Harvard, Duke, Georgetown, NYU and McGill, the Global Leaders Program's faculty includes Nobel Prize receivers, Grammy winners and TED presenters. Together, they work with and support cohort members throughout a nine-month journey that combines online and in-person courses and retreats and features on-the-ground fieldwork in more than 40 countries. Today's session is co-hosted by Luan Museo Emocional. How many times have we been told that it's wrong to feel? How many times have you walked and ignored the landscape? It's time to stop and think about what we can do today to change tomorrow. To realize that as long as the sun goes down and comes out again, there is an opportunity to make a change. Because if we can dream of a better world, we can create it. Let's explore beyond what we can see at a glance. Let's make our inspiration, imagination, and creativity the main elements of the world we want. Let's analyze our decisions and discover what drives us to go in a deep state of reflection that provides us with tools to create good day by day. May the freedom to play and the empowerment of our individual and collective ethics guide the way, feel, believe, and create. The change we're waiting for depends on us. Luan, Emotional Museum. Before introducing today's distinguished speakers, I would like to share brief housekeeping requests to help make today's session more interactive and engaging for all of you who have joined. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a control panel with the chat. Please go over now and write your name country of residence and your organization. In the control panel, you will also find the questions section. You are encouraged to engage directly with our panelists by posing a question for them in the questions box. Please submit your questions as early as possible in this session as there will be a limit to how many can be answered. Finally, at the end of today's session, you will be prompted to complete a brief survey that will appear on the screens. We kindly ask that you share constructive feedback or suggestions for future sessions as we continue to evolve this growing series to address topics and challenges of relevance to all of you working in this sector around the world. And with that, let's get started. Hi everyone, how are you today? How's everybody feeling? My name is Marion from Luan Museo Emocional. I welcome everyone to our fourth session of the series of The Art of Mindfulness. First of all, I want to thank you all so much for being here today with us. I see in the chat box that we have people from all over the world. This is very, very, very exciting. It's truly a pleasure to introduce you today to Nick Kislinger. 
Nick is a wonderful, wonderful person. He began teaching breathwork to incarcerated youth in Los Angeles. After college, Nick received a Coro Fellowship in Public Affairs. He traveled to St. Louis, where he studied public policy and apprenticed for a year with lawyers, radio stations, mayors, chambers of commerce, and Fortune 500 businesses. After graduating, he accepted a post with the California Governor's Office of Education, where he was a conduit for incredible solutions to large-scale problems. In public affairs, he learned to identify problems and solutions and influence civil systems that scale change. From there, he joined Entertainment Industry Foundation, where he started their education initiative in planning $2 million of education programs to improve learning outcomes across the country. Subsequently, Nick started Killing Your Agency, helping clients strive for high impact in business, philanthropy, and government. Since then, he has launched the Social Business Incubator and co-working space Impact Hub, Howard Buffett's Junior Global Initiative Institute, and the Jelena Foundation. I met Nick a few years back ago because his agency ran the health and wellness program for the Summit Series. Nick is the Chief Innovation Officer of Breathwork, a mental fitness app that teaches you to control your mind and body through breath. Wow, Nick, it's truly amazing everything that you've accomplished. Today, we will dive into exploring and experiencing different types of breath work. Whether you're looking to decrease stress and anxiety, lower your heart rate, fall asleep, increase your energy and focus, or improve your endurance, there's a breath for that. Unlike meditation, which can take a lot of time and practice, breathing exercises have an immediate effect on both body and mind. These exercises can be applied daily or at certain moments and are a great tool to have in your arsenal. In this session, Nick will be guiding us through exercises that wake you up, calm you down, put you to sleep, and help you to feel amazing. I invite everyone in this session to feel free to connect with your body, to connect with your emotions, to feel compassion for yourself and for others around you on the difficulties that we've all experienced in life. Let's feel together Let's dive deep and let's let Nick guide us through this wonderful world of breathwork. Nick, please take the stage. Thank you so much, Miran. Thank you so much for that introduction. I feel like I've lived a million years when you hear it, <laughs> when you hear someone introduce you. And thank you so much for all of the organizers who put the time in. Um, and I know how much effort that takes. And I know that for everyone who's around the world in different time zones, I appreciate so much uh, your dedication to this conversation. And I very much appreciate the path that you're on. I've had an opportunity to learn about the host organizations and I'm so inspired that, um, especially in these times, we have groups that are dedicated to these forms of education, um, which are very near and dear to my heart. Um, today, I'm so honored and excited to share about breath, which, as Marion mentioned, um, has been something that's really important for me um, as a tool for making positive change in the world, which I found myself dedicated to from the earliest age I can remember. I grew up and around the kitchen table. Uh, my grandparents were always there in the house. And my grandfather was, uh, was a veteran of uh, World War II and spent a year in a prisoner of war camp and was a librarian there giving books away to people. And I remember he'd always say, what are you going to do, kid, with your life? Will it be something bigger than just your own? So that always motivated me to try and find a way to make a difference. And today I'm, I'm really excited that path has led me through all of those moments Marion mentioned. I'll talk a little bit about to breath. So what I'd like to do is, is just share a little bit about myself, the experience I've had sharing breath. And um, then we're going to open up a toolkit and we're going to take a few specific breaths out. We're going to talk a little bit about the power of breath at a high level. We're going to talk about a specific, a few specific breaths that you can apply when you want to wake up, fall asleep, calm down. And then we'll actually step into an experiential breath that will last about 30 minutes 
and we'll give you just a taste of, of the real power and depth um, and how you can apply this on your own. And then we'll open up for some questions. And please, along the way, please type your questions um, into the chat box or whether you're using um, menti.com. Um, and I'm really excited. So let's, let's get started. You know, it, it was an early start for me in breath. I was 15 years old and I was sent out of class one day at school and I ended up in a office of the school therapist and the school therapist said, well, you have a problem focusing. And so we're going to give you this pill. The pill was Adderall. I took the Adderall pill and it made me feel awful. It made me feel very strange, very different, not the intended effect. So I went looking. I went looking first to yoga, and in yoga I found pranayama, which was a form of directing breath as a precursor to meditation. And so I started studying that, and I learned that if I could master the alternate nostril breath, which is a 4-4 pattern breath, and we'll get into the formulas in a minute, I could do what the pill was going to do. And it was such a better version. And so from 15 onwards, I started learning all of these different modalities. And when I was in college, I had friends who wanted alternatives as well. They were taking these pills to help them study, to stay in the library so late. Maybe this is familiar for many of you who have to achieve such extraordinary things that you need such extraordinary level of focus. Well, I was very similar to you in that way. And the more I began teaching, the more I became inspired by the act of sharing what I was really passionate about. I had an opportunity to teach at a local juvenile detention center at that time. And I went into this juvenile detention center and I began teaching breath and I had one breath I was teaching. And the kids would come up to me and they'd say, I got into a fight last night with this guy and I can't calm down. I can't go to sleep. I'm having a hard time waking up. And so I started investigating, are there breaths that can be applied to these situations for these kids? It was extraordinary. There were breaths for focus and calm and sleep, all of these things. I had just learned the small piece of the larger puzzle that applied to me. All of a sudden I saw this applied to these kids. I also learned that during this experience, I was conducting a research experiment within this volunteering opportunity. And I was taking notes. I was asking the kids after we came out of the breath experience to write journals. I was then cataloging and indexing, highlighting and coding all of the notes. And I also would have these three talking pieces in the center of the room. And so when they were done writing, they could go to the center, we were sitting in a circle, and they could pick up a piece. One was a, a, a war, something that symbolized war. It was a big stick with a ball at the end. The other was a heart, a rose quartz heart. And the other was a, a rubber chicken. <laughs> and I wanted to create these three clear, different paths they could take. They could be funny, they could be heartfelt, or they could be much macho. And through studying, I began to see these extraordinary patterns of these kids, which grew up in communities that had very low access to resources. Because of their low access to resources, they were condemned in a sense. We use a term in economics in the United States of economically redlined, where you grow up and there's no grocery stores, no fresh food, there's no pharmacy, the schools aren't good. These kids came from zip codes or regions that would determine what they could accomplish in their lifetime, the amount of toxicity, both literal, environmental, but also energetic. Walking out your door and having the choice between your friends who are drinking alcohol or doing drugs or doing crimes and not many other options. So many of these kids, they'd start by taking the war out and they talk about how, how strong they are, how scary they are. And then over time, what began to happen as we implemented the breath is we began 
seeing kids talking about the layers behind that, the fear that drove them into those behaviors, the sadness, the heartbreaking experience that drove them into those experiences. So many of them had, the, had trauma and we would do these breath experiences with them for over a year and I could just watch the layers fall off of them. And I began to see, wow, the healing arts can play an extraordinary role, not just in improving the state of our life, if our baseline is, is a nice level, it could go up, but also for those who are lower on the DSM, because that's a psychological term, if they've had some trauma, you can help to regulate them. Extraordinary power, extraordinary power of breath. Um, later on, I would go to teach um, at Los Angeles Unified School District, where I saw a very similar thing with students in very particular zip codes um, who just because of where they grew up inherited a lot of a lot of trauma. And it was an extraordinary experience for me during that time. As Marianne mentioned, I went into public policy because I felt that if we could change public policy, we could change the outcomes for these kids. And that set off um, a 15-year journey for me, which has led down so many interesting winding roads, always with the intention of trying to scale solutions, make an impact. And ultimately now, I come back full circle, come back full circle, as last year, I launched this mental fitness app called Breathwork, where we teach people to direct their breath in particular ways so they can overcome trauma if they have it, or they can just develop a strong toolkit for their own mental wealth so they can be rich in mental strength and those tools. And now I serve as the chief innovation officer for Breathwork. And, and really, as I come to you today, really in my role as a chief education officer, here to share with you some of these tools. And enough talk. I'm happy to answer more questions about the different various steps that brought me here. But I think we should just jump right in. Let's dive in and learn some of these tools together. So let's start with the Breathwork Basic 101. So... For far, further reading on this topic, I would highly recommend James Nestor's new book, Breathe, a number one seller in the United States and the UK at the moment. He does a fantastic job of really laying out the story over time of breath, many different angles. So I highly recommend as follow-up reading, you might want to look into that. Then I can recommend along the way some others. One of the things that, that James really points to in his book, which is something that I, I learned when I was young, was one of the first things is everybody, let's start by taking just one deep breath. However you'd like, just take a deep breath. Now, did you breathe in through your mouth or through your nose? Because if you breathe through your mouth, you're gonna wanna think now in the future about breathing through your nose. We all wanna be nose breathers. Nose breathing is the best out of the two. Breathing through your mouth or breathing through your nose. Exactly, the nose. And there are certain techniques where you want to use the mouth, but by and large, just if we're at a high level talking about breath 101 and really becoming dialed and perfect using it, you're going to want to breathe through your nose. During these times of respiratory pandemics as well, the nose is an incredible filtration device. It also helps to regulate your carbon dioxide and your oxygen levels in a much better way than your mouth does. Next, second is I got my hand on my stomach, my belly, my diaphragm. And when you breathe in, you really want to be thinking about breathing into your belly, into your diaphragm. So take your hands and make this little double L, and now put it on your hips. Put it just at the top of your hips, wherever you are, and take a deep breath in through your nose. And because your fingers are down there by your stomach, feel your belly inflate. And exhale through your nose and feel your belly deflate. Inhaling through your nose, feel your belly rise. And exhaling through your nose, feel your belly, your stomach, your diaphragm recede, go back in. That's the second basic. 
at a very high level. You always want to breathe through your nose and you want to be breathing deep into the diaphragm. This is going to give you much greater oxygen, carbon dioxide levels. The second thing that I, third thing that I want to talk about is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is something that I think a lot of people think of as part of the breathing process, but you don't really want a lot of it because maybe it could be harmful and maybe you heard it was harmful. Well, there's a lot of misconceptions about carbon dioxide that I want to clear up. One, carbon dioxide is actually better to think of it as a digestive agent for oxygen. So as you're breathing in oxygen, you need a certain amount of carbon dioxide as a way of bringing the oxygen in. Okay, so if you have, if you're taking a gulp of air, a breath of air, and you're taking this much oxygen, but you have this much carbon dioxide, you might actually only be able to process, digest, internalize into your blood this much. If you raise your carbon dioxide slightly, you can then take in more. So your oxygen level always wants to be higher, but you do need a little carbon dioxide. That's the second piece, and that'll come into play in some of our techniques. Those are your absolute breathwork basics, okay? Now, first, we're going to get into a series of our core breaths that we find people really love. At the end of this session, you guys will ask me questions. I would like to learn about how to focus, how to recharge, and I'd be happy to share those with you, but we'll do just a few, and then we're gonna jump into um, a really fun, um, trans potentially transformative session um, that I've been teaching for, for years. So first, let's do a few breaths. So I think during this time, the calm breath is so important. And the calm breath is a four, six breath. And it's a really good example of a breath that puts on the brakes versus putting on the gas. So some of these breaths can speed you up, get you excited, wake you up, energize you, stimulate you. Others are going to calm you down, ground you, relax you. And the breath is like a remote control to your nervous system. And with these different breaths, you can select which channel you want to be. And there's so many different channels. Hope that makes sense. And some breaths are going to speed you up, some are going to slow you down. The way you know is if the inhales are longer than the exhales, that's the gas. If the exhale is longer than the inhale, then that's the brakes. So we'll start with our calm breath, the four, six breath. So what would that be? You have a shorter inhale, a longer exhale. So you're gonna be pumping the brakes. You're gonna be calming down. You're gonna be dealing with an elevated heart rate. So if you find yourself short of breath, with an elevated heart rate, dealing with a situation where you're going into a business meeting, you're about to teach a group of students. I also, by the way, would use this with my students to prime them and prepare them for the optimal learning environment, right? So in the same way that you may have a glass of water to hydrate you, you may have a bite of food to give you energy, you can use the calm breath as a way of preparing you to be in a more calm-centered space, which is really great for educators as well. It's very simple. This four-six breath is in through the nose for four, out through the mouth, for six. Very simple. Okay. We'll try this together. Wherever you are, find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Just take one deep breath in together and let it go. That felt good. Let's do that again. Let's take one deep breath in and let it go. Okay. Breathing in through the nose. One, two, three, four, out through the mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six. In through the nose. One, two, three, 
four, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Last one, in through the nose, out through the mouth. I already feel my parasympathetic nervous system kicking in. Okay, I'm a little scientific and nerdy about these things, but maybe you felt some difference. Usually you'd practice these for 60 seconds, but think about that. How long do we meditate for? How long do we do yoga for? How long do we do these things that bring us to a state of peace, tranquility, and readiness for what's coming next in our lives? In just 60 seconds, all of a sudden your body chemistry will change. I mentioned the parasympathetic nervous system. We have these two parallel nervous systems. You have your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. Imagine you looked over your shoulder and you saw a bear. How do you think you would breathe? Would you say, a bear? No, you would be short of breath. It's, it's a bear. By breathing in the way that we'd like to feel, we can bring our body into that state of being. The parasympathetic nervous system is when you relax and calm down. It's repairing, it's recharging, it's replenishing. The sympathetic nervous system is when you see that bear. You are in fight or flight. You cortisol levels are up. Your adrenaline levels are up. You are pumping the gas. And so... This is all about knowing and identifying when you want to pump gas or brakes. So the calm breath is a really great example of a parasympathetic breath, a relaxing breath, breath that puts the brakes on. Again, that's four, six, in through your nose for four, out through your mouth for six. Okay, we're going to stick with the breath first in the break category, and then we'll move forward. Another one that I love because I've always had a hard time throughout my life sleeping is our sleep breath, and that's a four, seven, eight breath. So what you're going to do is you breathe in through your nose for four, you're going to hold for seven, and then you breathe out through your mouth for eight breaths. The key on the out breaths is you want to imagine you've got a straw in your mouth and your lips are just really small. Like this. <laughs> it's probably very funny to see. And you're just pushing slowly as if through a straw. You're just pushing the air out slowly versus this. You're trying to get to eight and you go like this. <sighs> you're just not going to get there. And getting to eight is also hard. So the first few will be a struggle, but you'll get there eventually. So it's your four, seven, eight breath. What it does is it lowers your heart rate. Again, it's four on the in, eight on the out. That's a breaking breath. That's a slowing down breath. That's a parasympathetic breath. I highly recommend this as a way of priming yourself for a state of awareness, as well as a physical, chemical set of reactions that are going to prepare you for sleep. Let's just give that a try together so you know the formula. Okay, we're breathing. What if someone's nose is blocked? How ah. can they actually work it out? What happens? Great question. Great question. So over time, our nose will start to block up. Um, and this is something that you can just work on and, and repair. Um, so first and foremost, if you wanted to do some triage, by that I mean... Just right now, in the moment, you want the benefit, but your nose is blocked. You can use your mouth for these techniques. So you can do four, six through your mouth. That'll be fine for now. And eventually you want to transition to the nose, but you can make that transition. So let's look at what could be the problem. On one end of the spectrum, the most severe issue with the nose can be the deviated septum. The deviated septum can be that literally in your sinus passages, you have serious um, blockages. And those issues are challenging. Those are on the most challenging side. And oftentimes people for deviated septums, they will go in and they'll try with an ear, nose, and throat doctor to actually have surgery. But before you do that, a way of 
addressing that issue, you can also do a number of natural topical things that aren't as invasive. One is you can start rinsing and cleaning out the nasal passages to open those nasal passages up. So um, you can use what's known as a neti pot. You can use what's known as a Neomed squeeze bottle. And there's a little saline solution that are often sold with those products. You could buy all of this on Amazon. Neti pot, it's an N-E-T-I, neti pot. Or the Neomed, another squeeze bottle. And you put a little saline solution in and you squeeze it and it goes up one side and down. Yeah, you got it. And then up one side and down the other. What it does is it cleans and it opens the passageways up. So if you don't have something severe as a deviated septum, that'll be really helpful for you over time. And then I would just say it's just something that has to be worked on. As you place attention and focus onto it, you'll begin to develop better air passage in that region. Mostly people develop that because A, they have a diet which creates a lot of mucus in their sinus, okay? And so that's another element that you might wanna look at. You say, maybe I have celiac or maybe I have a gluten issue. And because I'm eating gluten, because I'm eating sugar, maybe just for me, I'm not saying for everybody, you could create a lot of congestion up in that region. Okay, so that's just some ideas. And I also just want to share um, that I am not a doctor and I'm not offering medical advice, although I am uh, training in school to be licensed um, as a clinical therapist. Um, I'm just sharing um, tips and suggestions that I think would be good for your lifestyle here. So if in this moment, though, your nose is just totally clogged, you can still use the formula. The formula still works. Now, I want to address the question that came through about how do you breathe out slowly? I think about if I had like a straw. You know, if I had a straw, the straw constricts and it limits how much air you can breathe in and breathe out. And so if I have a long inhale or a long exhale, I really think about spring that air in very slowly, okay? I think about moving that air in so I could hit those counts. The amazing thing about breath is that breath is like, we were talking about music earlier in the intro video, okay? There's a beautiful parallel because music is a set of formulas in a sense, these notes that happen in succession with one another. And breath is very similar. Follow these breath formulas and you'll end up with particular results every time, which is really beautiful and reassuring, I think. So we did our calm breath and we did our sleep breath. I'll pause there. Marianne, did that answer the question? Yes, perfectly well. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. So I'm going to offer just a few more breaths and, um, and then we'll, we'll transition. So we have a calm breath. We have a sleep breath. I wanted just to share in this category, we also created an anxiety breath, um, one that just really, if you're dealing with lots of anxiety, it's very similar to the calm breath, but you add a two-second hold. So you breathe in for four. Hold, one, two, out through the mouth for six. In through the nose hold out through the mouth okay we'll pause there for a second not only are you going to get the benefit of slowing the heart rate down your exhale is longer than your inhale but with the two second hold what you're going to do is you're going to create a bit of carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is going to have a really relaxing effect for you Okay, great. So we've got three parasympathetic breaths. Let's now do some of um, our medium breaths. So I want to teach you the focus breath. For those of you who are in school, you're there for extended periods of time. Um, this is a really simple one. It's called the alternate nostril breath. Really easy. You make this with your hands. You take your thumb out. You take your pinky finger out. You put the rest of your fingers down. Okay, very simple. I think surfers also do this when they're in the water, like, hey, man, nice wave. 
So this is really easy. What you're going to do is you'll put your thumb over your left nostril and you'll breathe first in through your nose, this nostril only, for four seconds. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pinky and you'll close your right nostril, the nostril you just breathed in through, and you'll breathe out for four seconds. Now you're going to breathe back in through your left. So you're going back up through your left, breathing in for four. Then you're going to switch and you're going to breathe out for four. And it goes back and forth, breathing back in through this side. Switch. Breathing back in. Switch. Breathing back out. Okay, very simple. Very simple breath. That's known as the alternate nostril breath. And somebody just dropped the word I saw in the chat, pranayama, and that is absolutely correct. When I went looking for these breaths, I read... Um, Light on Yoga by Angar, and I began discovering, wow, in addition to yoga, there's a whole world, whole world of controlling and directing breath known as pranayama. And I began practicing that. And now all of our techniques are based on the research that we do. And almost all of these techniques trace back thousands of years. There is a lost science and art of breath that we want to bring back to the world in this time. And that one example is your focus breath. So this breath doing four, 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 four. That focus breath is really helpful for you to be able to focus and hone your awareness is something that I've used really effectively throughout my life and throughout my career. Um, would love to teach you another breath. This is um, our awake breath. So our awake breath is we are going to breathe in now faster than our, um, than our exhale. So what we'll do is we'll breathe in for four through our nose and out for one through our mouth. In for four through our nose, out through our mouth for just one. And this is something I do every morning when I'm in bed because I don't know about you, but I have a hard time getting out of bed sometimes. I hit the sleep, the, sno the snooze button. I don't know why anybody invented a snooze button. It's just be alarm and then done. The snooze is like a gateway drug into just staying in bed forever. I mean, am I right? And so what I do to get around the snooze is the awake breath. So I'm there in bed and I do the four, breathing in through your nose out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, one, two, three, four, out through the mouth, one, in through the nose, one, two, three, four, out through the mouth, one, in through the nose, out through the mouth, one. Okay, so what's great about that is that's like putting on the gas. We did the breaths that are relaxing. Now we're putting on the gas. And the gas is about really getting you there, really moving you. And you can feel your heart rate starts to elevate. You bring adrenaline into the body. You start to trigger your sympathetic nervous system. Part of your body says, oh, is there something happening that I'm preparing for? It really gets you going. And that, I think, is a really helpful tool that you can have throughout the day. Sometimes when I'm very tired in the day, I use that breath. Now, each of these breaths in our app, which I, I'm so happy to teach here today, and if, if you are interested in uh, breath work or learning more, please check out our app. It's on the, the App Store, um, B-R-E-A-T-H-W-R-K. There's no O. And we recommend that you do these breaths for 60 seconds to 90 seconds. You can continue to two minutes, three minutes. Three minutes is really good. But if you only have 60 seconds, 90 seconds, you can still find, get the effect. For the breaths that have the gas, it can go quicker. For the breaths that um, are calming you down, 
you might need a little more time because we're really wound tight as people, as we all know. So you've got your awake breath. I think I saw a comment there about the watering of the eyes. And I know that on a biological level in the body, when we start to alter and change our chemistry, we can just move a lot of oxygen around. And sometimes when that happens, our eyes can water. It's just something on a biological level as we start to move the chemical mixture around in our body. And then I also like to look at it from another lens because there's so many different hats you could wear to understand things in this world. One being the physiological, the other being the spiritual in a way, putting on a hat of, of spiritual spirituality and saying that you're moving a lot of energy and prana um, to go back to the pranayama, um, the Hindu reference um, of, of breath work. So Right. We've done our awake. And um, I want to offer one now called the recharge breath, because this is a great one in the, the afternoon when you're it's 4 p.m. You're really tired. You've had a cup of coffee at 1 p.m. to get you up and you've had a really tough day, but you just have to keep going. So um, the box breath, as it's commonly known, we call it the recharge breath. This is a breath that um, was really popularized over the last few years in our community by um, emergency responders like firefighters, uh, like EMTs and ambulance drivers, because they have to deal with such intense situations over and over, right? So they're Adrenaline cortisol levels, they spike, then they come down. They spike, then they come down throughout the day. And so what do you do if you have repeat or ongoing stress in that way? Box breath is a great example because it lowers your heart rate while increasing your CO2 levels. Okay, so here, here I'll give you a quick little demonstration. You breathe in through your nose for four. You hold for four. You breathe out through your mouth for four, and then you hold for four. Actually, it's the hold at the end that's the hardest for me when I start. I'm just short of breath. And if you are too, that's fine. You'll move through that as you develop the greater strength in the lungs and the diaphragm. Let's try that again. It's your box breath because you're going in an even box. Four, hold four, out four hold for, in for, hold for, out for, hold for, in. So it sort of does this box. Let's give it a shot together just so you know the formula and if you could write it down or you can use the app. Um, okay, so breathing in, holding, one, two, three, four, out through the mouth, one, two, three, four, Holding, one, two, three, four. In through the nose, one, two, three, four. Holding. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Out through the mouth, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. And let's just pause there. So the recharge breath, as we call it, also known as the box breath, is really good about resetting your nervous system. And this is a great, for me, this is my four o'clock breath. So I set my phone with different al alarm reminders. When I wake up at 7.30, I do the awake breath. At 4 p.m. in the afternoon, I do the recharge breath. And typically around somewhere around noon or 1 p.m., <laughs> I, I do a calm breath or an anti-anxiety breath. And um, we have so many different breaths in our app that you can check out. Breaths for pain, breaths for anger, um, breaths for anxiety um, as well. And uh, for those who are interested in learning more, um, like many of our guests today have mentioned, um, that there is a lot of material out there that, that I've drawn from, that others, um, 
that others have drawn from. But there's a lot of great writing out there. James Nestor's book, Breath, is fantastic. Um, I highly recommend Patrick McEwen's The Oxygen Advantage is a really great in-depth book. Um, BK Ingar's Light on Yoga is really great as some of uh, inc- earliest reading that I did that traces um, breathing back to its pranayama origins um, and its histories thousands of years ago in India. Um, okay, so let's see where we are. And now we've learned some of our parasympathetic breaths. We've learned some of our awake and the breaths that are sympathetic, that push the gas. I'd like now to offer us a breath experience. And this is something that uh, for me has been um, incredibly powerful, Um, incredibly powerful in teaching. This is what I went in and I taught to incarcerated youth. Um, This is something that can make you feel uh, a lot of energy in really extraordinary states of being. Um, This can also, I've seen, I talked to somebody yesterday and they began tearing because they had a lot of pressure that they were living with in their lives and they didn't have any release valve, any way of just releasing. And it wasn't trauma. It was just that they held a lot of pressure in their family for the rest of their family. And so These can be ways that you can feel extraordinary things, but at the same time, you can also really bring up things that are challenging for you. Um, When you breathe in this next breathing style, which is a two-part breath, where you breathe in through your mouth, then you breathe out, what happens is there's something called tetania where your circulation to your extremities, to your hands is restricted and you can feel some cramping in your hands. Um, Usually that happens when you go and do this technique for 40 minutes, 60 minutes, 70 minutes. We're going to be doing it for about 15 minutes together. So you're going to have a little taste of where we're going and where this can go, but you're not going to be feeling the most, uh, Uh, intense feelings. And if anyone's interested, I I would love to follow up with you and we can, we can do something, but we're just going to do a little um, micro uh, amount here. Uh, But I want to give you the disclaimer that you can feel some cramping in the hands. It can happen in the feet. It can happen in the fingers. Sometimes people's hands go from this to this, and it's totally normal. And again, it's all about the brakes and the gas. If you feel uncomfortable in this next technique in any way, at any point, you just slow your breath down. You just slow your breath down. And I highly recommend always going and defaulting to a five, five breath, which, I, which is in through your nose for five, out through, in this case, your nose, which would be in through your nose. That was five, out through your nose. That five, five is a really good resting breath. And if at any time during this, you want to slow down, just go to the five, five. Perfect. So a couple other things I want to say. Um, I just saw the note about Android. No, we don't have an Android app. So sorry. We just can't afford it yet. We're just a startup. We just finished our seed round um, where we raised money, where we'll be able to make the Android app. But we're just um, still a little baby startup at this point. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to mention about this next session is that um, breathing intensely and rigorously in this way is going to take some focus. It's going to take some energy, okay? Because when you do this three-part breath, uh, It's going to bring up a sensation as if you were in the gymnasium. I mean, how many of you go to the gym? I run on the treadmill. After the third minute, I either need music or headphones or just the mental fortitude, the strength of my mind to push through and say, I've got this. You can do this. Keep going. And so I would challenge all of you in this moment to feel like you're in a gymnasium, a spiritual wellness gymnasium. You're the only one there, and you can push as hard as you want and know where that edge is. Be healthy and safe 
about it and know where your edge is. And now we are going to shift and I'll teach you this breath. So wherever you are, I would recommend instead of sitting up, I would highly recommend you be laying down. This is the only way to practice this technique is laying down. You want to lay down so that your body is completely flat on the ground. You don't want a pillow. You might want a blanket. You certainly want to be comfortable. And you want to lay down on the ground. And we're going to be practicing now a three-part breath where you breathe in through your mouth, first into your belly, you fill your stomach, and then you'll fill your chest, and then you'll breathe out. Okay, so you go in through your belly, in through your chest, and let it go. Belly, chest, let it go. Belly, chest, let it go. That's why it's known as a three-part breath. In, in, out. Also known as the connected breath or the holotropic method. This is a very powerful and beautiful technique that we're going to try together. So we have a little music prepared for you. And I would just ask, um, please find yourself in a comfortable laying position wherever you are. Lay down, get yourself comfortable. You absolutely want to lay down because you want your heart in line with the rest of the body. You don't want to be sitting up. Or it can be challenging for your heart to pump oxygen to your brain because you can get very lightheaded doing this. So when we're ready, we're just going to give it another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're going to begin as the music starts. You're going to start by breathing in through the belly, into the chest, and let it go. In, in, out. In, in, out. In, in, out. Belly, chest, exhale. In through the mouth, in, out. In, in, out. In, in, out. In, in, out. In, in, out. Into the belly, into the chest, and let it go. Into the belly, into the chest, and let it go. Into the belly, into the chest, let it go. You want to keep a fast-paced rhythm. Stay with me unless you feel like it's too much. Here we go. Belly, chest, exhale. Belly, chest, exhale. Belly, chest, exhale. Belly, chest, exhale. Exhale, in, in, out, in, in, out, in, in, out, in, in, out, belly, chest, exhale, belly, chest, exhale, in, in, out, 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 in, in, out. You're doing great. Keep going. In, in, out, in, in, out. Keep going. You're doing great. Just follow the rhythm of in, in, and out, and in, and in, and out, in, and in, and out. And you'll notice the sensation arising in your body. Start to feel all this energy that you're cultivating. Continue with the practice. Believe in the practice, the destination you're headed. In, in, and out. 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 In, in, and out, allowing any sensation to arise. You may feel this moment, this is challenging. Feel that you're in the gym. You're in your spiritual wellness gym. Dig in in this moment. Find that edge that's right for you. In, in, out. In, in, out. In, in, out. In, in, and out. Continue. In, in, out. Continue. In, in, out. In, in, out. 
in, in, out, 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 in, in, out. You're doing great. Keep going. In and in and out. And in and in and out. And in and in and out. Finding that rhythm. Finding that rhythm that's good for you. Whatever feels comfortable. In, in, out. But really find that edge. Ride that edge. In, in, out. In, in, out. Belly, chest, release. Belly, chest, release. All breaths through your mouth. In, in, and out. In through the mouth, in through the mouth, release through the mouth. In through the mouth, in through the mouth, release through the mouth. In through the mouth, in through the mouth, release through the mouth. Allowing any sensation to arise. You may feel hot, you may feel cold. Grab a blanket if you feel cold and continue with the process. Believe in yourself in this process. Something that's been passed down for thousands of years, practiced by billions of people throughout time. This one technique, continuing in, in, release. In, in, out. In, in, release. If you feel any unpleasant sensations that you don't want to work through, you just relax and stop the technique and move back to a 5-5 five, five breath. But for those of you that are still with us, just continue through. Find my breath and follow my breath. doing great continue you're doing great wonderful if you have any health condition that you feel uncomfortable with if you're in a later stage of pregnancy then be very mindful of that and you may not want to continue too many minutes farther into this technique you may already feel the positive sensations of this increased oxygen and carbon dioxide mixture but know what's right for you in this moment and we'll continue. In, in, out. 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 All right. This is really the part where we decide if we're gonna continue or not, and I really believe in you. Yes, this is very similar to what I've learned with the Wim Hof exercise, and let's just push it right now. There's so much connectivity between Wim Hof, interconnected breath, the connected breath, the holotropic, it all stems from the same tree which came to us thousands of years ago. Breathing in, in, out, in, in, out. 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 Follow my breath. <laughs> you got this. Let's keep going.
Yep, just keep going the same type of breath the whole time. In health, be lightheaded. Totally normal, just pushing through volume breath. Keep going, feeling that lightheadedness. I'm feeling it too. You're doing great, continuing. Continuing with the breath, continuing with this pace. You're doing fantastic. You're doing fantastic. You're linked to all 100 plus people who are around the world in this session doing this with you at this exact moment and linked with millions of people who use this breath to energize themselves throughout time. A very esoteric old spiritual breath. Staying with it, following my breath. You're doing great. Everybody, I want you to take a huge deep breath in, maximum inhale and hold it. And hold that breath at the top. Noticing any sensations that arise. I want you now to breathe out only half your air through your mouth. And hold. Now breathe everything out. One last deep maximum inhale in and hold. Feeling that energizing sensation throughout your body. I feel pins and needles. I feel this almost a rain of bliss come down on me. Extraordinary exhale sensation. Exhaling all your air out. Doesn't matter if you're on an empty stomach. Doesn't matter where you are, who you are. This is a great equalizing breath. It works the same on everyone. For those of you who feels a little too much, just pause here. For those of you who feel like you've got a little more in you, we're in the fourth quarter, okay? And this is the time to push it. Let's really lean in in this moment. We're gonna go just for a few more minutes. Here we go. Last round. In, in, out. Just follow my breath. It'll take you there. In, in, out. In, in, out. If you feel pressure in your body, just allow yourself to relax. You don't need to push past any uncomfortability, okay? If you feel yourself in any uncomfortability, just relax. If you're still with me, follow my breath and let's go. You got this. You deserve this. You deserve this moment to take off the mantle of your station and the pressure that you feel. It's 
fine if you're feeling any pressure, any discomfort, you can stop. The benefit of this breath is that it brings bliss. It brings an extraordinary oxygenation. It allows you to do extraordinary things with your body, like athletes like Wim Hof staying in ice water or Laird Hamilton becoming the best surfer in the world. It also just allows you to feel blissful and extraordinary. And for those of you who may experience some trauma in your life, it may allow you to release that, just like the kids at prison after Bob Page while I was there. You're always laying down in this always laying down in this technique we're almost there we just have a few minutes left stay with me stay with the breath you got this you deserve this follow my breath In, in, out, in, in, out, in, in, out, in, in, out, in, in, let it go, in, in, out, in, in, let it go, in, in, let it go, in, in, and let it go, in, in, let it go, in, in, let it go in in and 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 let it go maximum inhale breath in your next breath be a maximum inhale breath in and hold, you can bring your hands to your chest. You could tap your chest. Holding your breath, you could tap your chest. And as you breathe out, I want you to make some noise. Breathing out. Next breath in, maximum inhale breath in. Making noise as it goes out. Oh. Maximum inhale breath in, make another noise breathing out. Uh, feel that chest vibrating breathing in one more time maximum inhale breath out making noise uh, last maximum inhale with breathe in when you breathe out, put your lips together and just humming mm, all the way out. Mm. Now I want you to shift your breath to the four, six. You're breathing in through your nose for four, out through your mouth for six. Okay? We're going to start to shift and integrate the work that we've just done. In through your nose, out through your mouth for six. In through your nose for six, out through your mouth for six. Breathing in through your nose, in through your nose for four, out through your mouth for six. Staying with that breath. Allowing any sensation to arise. Noticing any sensation that arises as you begin to integrate this practice. In through your nose, one, two, three, four, out through the mouth, one, two, three, four, five, six, in through your nose, one, two, three, four, out through your mouth, one, two, three, four, 
five, six. Just allowing all sensations to arise. You deserve this. This is an accessible place you can return to and take refuge at any point, wherever you are. Just allowing yourself to still lay there. Allowing yourself to stay there. Just allowing the sounds to wash over you. Allowing any sensation to arise. So we continue to give ourselves a few minutes here of peace. the music to carry you down the river. Now slowly I want you to wiggle your toes. Slowly, I want you to wiggle your fingers. Slowly bringing your attention back to the room you're in. Slowly bring your awareness back into your body. Slowly bring yourself back. When you're ready, just curling over onto your right side. When you're ready, curling over onto your right side. Just holding your there, yourself there for a minute. Just hold yourself there for a minute. Almost like you were being held by someone. When you're ready, let's push yourself up to seated position. And we can return back to our practice, back to our session here together. So we're coming back in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, and one. And when you're ready, just finding yourself back and would love to know people's experiences. And this is a wonderful time now to ask questions and to share. I want to congratulate everyone for whatever amount of that experience you, you gave to yourself. And for those who felt um, at any point, a little dizzy, a little cold, a little headachey, any sensations, yawning. The yawning is a carbon dioxide effect when you have so much carbon dioxide coming in. Um, all very natural, all normal experiences. And I hope that both this last experience and the tools now that you have in your toolkit can help you throughout uh, your journey, wherever you are, and maybe offer some tools that you could share with other people. So I thank you all so much. It's such an honor 
Marianne, I, I am so grateful for you inviting me to join this group today and, and share these things that I'm so passionate about. Thank you very much. It has been amazing. So the session was wonderful. Did everybody feel it? You feel a tingling in your hands. You feel tingling in your body. You feel this um, incredible um, state of awareness and blissfulness. I hope that everybody could feel that. And anything that you guys felt is uh, it's completely valid, right? Some people can feel cold. Some people are hot. You know, it's different temperatures, different you know sensations around, and everything is is perfect for that reason. No. Thanks so much, everybody, sharing their experience. Many feelings, very energetic. Thank you, lightheaded. Some people feel rested. Some people feel grounding. It was amazing. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your experience. We are so blessed to have this opportunity with Nick. Now, we have a few uh, questions that came out um, during the session. So if you're okay with it, Nick, uh, let's jump into the questions. Absolutely. Uh, are there any breathing exercises to have a better memory? Is there something that could improve like brain cognition? That's a great question. Um, we're actually researching that right now. And while we haven't come across um, concrete scientific evidence, we are seeing that um, there are some connections to breath that increase oxygen levels in the brain. We know that if we increase those oxygen levels, um, it could result in an increase in, in function of, of the brain, but I can't go ahead and, and go that far to say that we have it right now, but stay tuned. If you, if you follow us at Breathwork, um, we'll be posting those. Um, you know, our goal is just to uncover many different types of breaths, but I would say that um, increasing your oxygen count by doing your four, six breath, um, is a really great way to start. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. And, um, what could you recommend, uh, for people that want to have new energy to start the day? What type of breath work do you recommend to feel energetic very early in the morning? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, so I think our awake breath is really great or any of the breaths that are the stimulating breath. So depending on whether you feel most comfortable through your nose or your mouth, um, you could do your, the four in one out um, through the nose and the mouth. That is. So that's four through the nose, one through the mouth. That's a really good one. There's also um, this exact breath can also be used in very short amounts early in the morning um, to bypass that snooze. So you could do the two in through the mouth, one out through the mouth. Um, that's another really simple technique that you could do. Basically, now that you know the formulas, what you want to do for those who are looking to wake up in the morning in that way is do a breath that has a long inhale and a short exhale. And you'll find what works for you, but the formulas always work if you know where the gas and the brakes are, right? So whether you're through your nose or your mouth at the start, make sure it's longer than the end. So that could be, or it could be the, or it could be, let's say, four in, two out. Just pump the gas and you'll get there. Amazing. Perfect. Another uh, two great questions. Is there a great, uh, is there a breath for depression and is there a breath for controlling anxiety or panic attacks? Absolutely. I, I use the panic attack, um, anxiety breath a lot for people where it's, it's our four, two, six breath. It's our anti-anxiety breath. So that's breathing in through your nose for four, holding for two, out through the mouth for six. So that's again, four, two, six, four, two, six is really good for anti-anxiety and panic attacks as well as the calm breath. But if you need to really apply something quickly, that's a really good one. And I know that um, that's used by, by therapists um, for helping patients who are having a panic attack in the moment. As far as depression goes, um, to me, I think of always depression. I've suffered from depression in my life personally. 
And I think uh, that depression has to be handled with not a silver bullet, like one thing, but like silver buckshot, like many things coming together to address an issue. And it's the same case in breath that I don't think there's one breath that's going to solve it because to me, depression came in many different forms. There were some times that I didn't feel energized or motivated. There's sometimes that my depression showed up in a full case where I felt anxiety. And so I had to deal with both of them. So what I suggest is um, a package. Okay. Because what I always found is that you wanted to deal with the anxiety and, and that section of the depression, but then you wanted energy and inspiration because sometimes everything feels gray and you know, you're not interested in things. So I do a combination. So I would use the four two six breath to deal with the sense of ugh, anxiety, my life is hard, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be in through your nose for four, one, two, three, four, hold for one, two, out through your mouth for six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I would do that and then I would pump the gas. And by pumping the gas, I would bring a lot of energy into my body, a lot of oxygen and carbon dioxide into the body. And what would happen is I'd feel a little inspiration. <gasps> oh, I feel a little elevated. I can sort of move out of the clouds of the depression. So it's a combination of the two. For the inspiration breath, I would do um, that, that four one that I showed you earlier. Four through the nose, one through the mouth. That's a good one. Or this one that we just did, which in our app we call our euphoria breath. The so that's my answer is that it's dealt with in combination with, with its smaller parts. I hope that helps. Amazing. And one last question, because we have to close. We've had many, many requests for questions, and I wish we could address them all, but we only have five minutes to close. And um, why do we exhale usually uh, using the mouth instead of the nose? How is it different, and how does it affect? Absolutely. So um, George Catalan in 1810 was a British explorer who came into the United States, and he, he lived with a tribe of the Sioux Indians. And he, he studied these Indians who had such extraordinary health. And he asked the question, why? And he noticed that none of these Indians breathe through their mouth. They all breathe through their nose. And when they breathe through their nose, their cheekbones stayed high. Their nose stayed wide. Their chest stayed up. They grew taller. And George went on a mission to scour the earth to try and understand who on this planet is breathing through their mouth and who's breathing through their nose and what are the implications of it. And what he found is that nasal breathing is a far superior way. Why? You get a better mixture of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Two, you get the facial features that stay up. The jaw stays very strong versus the mouth breathers where you seem to go, your jaw starts to drop, your eyes start to droop, and most importantly, we don't need to take that many breaths in the day as we think. We are actually mostly all over-breathing. It's how we're breathing and the rhythm of the breath that's most important. And what George Catalan found in his research and his book called Breath of Life is a wonderful treaty on this that I highly recommend, as well as Patrick McEwen's The Oxygen Advantage. He explains this very well. Um, but it's the mixture of carbon dioxide and oxygen that comes in through the nose that allows you to breathe less but more strategically versus the mouth. The other thing that I'm going to throw out there, which I think is very interesting, is all over the world today, people are wearing masks. And when you wear a mask, you cover up your mouth. And if you breathe through your mouth under the mask, you can't regulate carbon dioxide. You get too much carbon dioxide in the mask and you panic. That's the panic sensation of why you see people wearing masks and then walking outside, taking them off and going, oh, I feel like I couldn't breathe. They have too much carbon dioxide mixture breathing through your mouth with the mask. And if you breathe through your nose, you'll be able to regulate the carbon dioxide and the oxygen under the mask. You'll be able to breathe successfully. So I wanted to get those, both of those answers in there while we just had time, just under the bell. Amazing. 
Well, thank you so much, Nick, and everyone who has joined this session today from around the world. Just want to mention that we had such an incredible community here today. People connecting from Mexico, from USA, most of European countries, India, Sri Lanka, Philippines, Pakistan, Kenya, Rwanda, India, and many others more. Thank you so much. We encourage you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube for the latest news. Please feel free to answer the feedback form. All kinds of suggestions are more than welcome and help us deeply to improve. And before closing, I would also like to encourage you to join our Art as Mindfulness series. This will be held every Wednesday, same time as today, for the next seven weeks. During these sessions, together with illustrious industry leaders, we will explore deeply important and rapidly evolving themes. Our next session will be next Wednesday, August 26, same time as today, and we will explore how we can, through a clear channel, create a more equitable path to creativity, vibrancy, and joy, not only for ourselves, but for all. And we can heal our systems and others if we forget about healing ourselves. No? You leave this session with a clear sense of your embodiment, as well as with tips and tricks for living a more festive, vibrant, and joyful life. Please click the link that we shared in the chat to register. Thank you again so much. Have a fantastic afternoon. Good evening. Good rest of the day. Stay safe and stay healthy and see you very soon. Thank you so much, Nick. It was a pleasure having you here today. Thank bye you. bye. Bye, bye everyone.